Hi, I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, today I have a project updates video for you. I have three finished objects, I have three works in progress, and I have uh, two acquisitions to show you. So a lot for me today. <laughs> um, if you are a new viewer, I'm Hannah. I share um, what I'm making and a little bit about my designs. I have some designs for um, kids available on Ravelry. And yeah, mostly just like what I am enjoying knitting right now. I have um, a couple of other fun videos. I had a video with my sister last week, um, which is super fun. I have one that's a design spotlight um, for a summer design. So there's a lot of other videos out there. This is a regular projects updates one. I will start with my finished objects. The first one is this sweater. Um, I did wear this in a video where it was not finished, um, but now it's finished <laughs> and it doesn't have buttons yet, but I will do the buttons soon. But yeah, I will stand up so you can see it. Um, this is my first cardigan, the first cardigan by Hive Knits. It has a double knit button band and the sleeves are half fisherman's rib. And I held together Goodwill, Pearl Soho Goodwill and Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair. And the Pearl Soho Goodwill was walking stick and the Knitting for Olive was called hazel. And I really like how the colors were like almost exactly the same. I wasn't looking for like a marled look, I wanted it to be, like I wanted them to match and be like one color. And so it just has like a little bit extra shine from the mohair and I really like that a lot. I'm very happy with the sweater. It is just what I was hoping for. Like, yeah, I just, I'm just so happy with it. I can't recommend the pattern enough. Um, truly amazing, like the amount of detail that Lizzie put in the design. There's also a pullover version, which I'm starting to think maybe I need that. Um, yeah, I'm just really, really, really happy with it. I did like the recommended ease, all of that. I just have to put the buttons on. So I asked on Instagram the other day, like which buttons I should use. I was between these gold ones and these brown, like wooden ones. And pretty much everyone said the brown ones, except my husband who said the gold ones. <laughs> um, and I was sort of leaning towards the gold ones because I wear a lot of gold, like gold colored jewelry and stuff. Like usually have on my gold earrings. I don't know where they are um but I just realized like earlier I only have three of these and I have four wooden ones so I think I might have to go wooden people were talking about it kind of de depends on what I was going for like if I want it to be like more soft and academic than the wooden buttons but if I'm looking for like something like very chic and fancy the gold are perfect for that I think I'm more of the soft and academic in this season of life but I do, I do want to be fancy and flashy at some point in my life. Um, so maybe I will just hold on to those gold buttons and then see, um, yeah, later on if I need to take, take the wooden ones off and put the gold ones back on. But anyway, I really, really love this sweater. Um, I think when I was knitting with the mohair, it was making me sneeze a little bit, but since I've washed it and worn it, that hasn't happened. I don't really know. I never thought like, I don't know if you can see the details are just so pretty. I didn't, I don't think I'm like allergic to it or anything, but it was kind of weird. I think it was making my husband sneeze too, but now that I've been wearing it, it hasn't. So I don't know. Interesting thoughts. I know some people say like, you know, they have a sensitivity to mohair. I just, I had just never thought of that, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm really happy with it. It's super warm. I can't wait to wear it like every day this winter. I would love to make another. The body itself didn't take long at all. What took me a long time was the sleeves. Um, even knit them shorter than recommended because my arms are just not that long. But I think because they have so much extra, like, I don't know if you can see. Okay, yeah, so my arm is here. They have so much extra ease in the sleeves. There's not any decreases that I feel like that's why it took so long in the half fisherman's rib. But I'm very happy with them. I wouldn't change it at all. I love it. It's really, I'm just really happy with it. You know, sometimes like you, you have some wins when you knit and sometimes you're like, oh, that wasn't quite it. This was a win. Um, oh, I have another win. <laughs> um, another finished object, my ranunculus. And I talk about this in detail in my last episode that I recorded with my sister. Um, so I will put a link to that so you can watch it if you want more, more info. 
The basic details, I used Pearl Soho Santalina in the color Beige Bunny, which sadly is sold out right now. I was I went on there having a sale and I went on to order more. Um, so that I, cause I had some left. So I was like, oh, I'll order more and make, you know, something else, but it's out of stock. So I think I would have to make like stripes or something. Wow, I shouldn't have make something with stripes. Okay, that would be cute. Anyway, um, they sent me the yarn to make this, which was very kind. And I talked about in the last video, how I'm super happy with the ease here. I love the length that I made it. Um, but the only thing is that the sleeves are really tight on me. Um, and so I think what I decided I'm going to do is the first thing is, is redo the I cord because I did do a decrease like every 10 stitches. It won't make a huge difference, but I think like there's more stretch like in the sleeve and the I cord really keeps it tight. So I did modify it to have I cord finishes um, because the neck was already really high on me and I didn't want it to be any higher with ribbing. I didn't need the right gauge and so I just sized up two sizes. Um, I, ca I tried to calculate it and all that. I actually only sized up one because I did want less ease than recommended in the pattern. But then when I was knitting, I intended to size up two, but then when I tried it on, I was like, oh no, I think this is good. In hindsight, I should have sized up twice. I did the calculations and everything, but then when I tried it on, I was like, oh no, it's fine. It'll be fine. But yeah, so that's the only thing I would change maybe if I knit this again was to do the two sizes up like I had um, originally planned to do. But overall, I'm so happy with it. I get the hype. I do want to make more. I think it's lovely. I felt super sophisticated wearing it. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the color, all of it, the yarn, the Santalina is so beautiful. Um, it's the, it's like a little airy um but i feel like i could also just wear it like an or something underneath it it's not like see-through or anything um yeah overall it felt like another win i have another finished object to show it's not blocked though which is fine but let me find the front okay this is my second sample for um a design i'm working on right now it's in testing this is my oh yeah it doesn't have a name yet i'm kind of i kind of have a name in my head but i want to think about it more before i announce it but a lot of my testers are posting their pictures and i want them to be able to like put a hashtag on it so it's findable later because like yeah i feel like i always want to see tester pictures before i make something i know those are important so i want them to be able to see it i haven't blocked it yet so this will even out more the saddle shoulder will will look better after the blocking um my jogless stripes but yeah i'm i'm really happy with it this one's for my son um and so it's his length his arm length all of that it's a saddle shoulder um worsted heavy worsted weight or air and weight um yeah I, the sh saddle shoulder i just like love yeah so this is the second sample this is the first sample that i made um, it doesn't have a recipient. It's just a, a sweet little, little sweater for pictures. It's the second size. And then my son is wearing the, uh, fifth, five or six, size five or six. I don't remember, but I'm just excited because it is nowhere near pattern launch and I have two samples and I always want to have two samples. And then I rarely make two samples. I think the trick is going to be making one for my son, which is what I always do. I always make his size because then it gets worn. Um, and if he wants to model it, he could, he doesn't usually, but if he wants to, he could, but the trick is going to be making the smallest size because it goes so fast. Um, this isn't the smallest size. It's like the second or third, but it still went really fast because it's still, still pretty small. Okay. Those are finished objects for me. I have some new works in progress, some old works in progress. <laughs> we will start with a new one. I have been working on making hats for me and my husband and my son for an upcoming trip. And I originally, I was like, I'm gonna buy us all a skein of the same yarn, make us all have the same hat, very cute, all of that. And then I remembered I wasn't buying yarn this year. And it felt like, you know, I could because it was for a special experience, but I plan to buy a lot of yarn um, on, our, on our trip at least I'm going to like, you know, be open to that. 
And so I was like, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I went in my stash or my yarn closet and I found all of the yarn that I had that was like kind of a similar color. And I wanted to do this like sort of capsule wardrobe hat that like, you know, my son could wear all the time, my husband could wear all the time, it match everything because I don't know, I just, I wanted them to, you know, have one they could wear with everything. But then I was making the first hat and I was using this like beige color and I really liked it. But then my son saw it and he was like, me want a blue hat. And so I was like, okay, you know what? He wants a blue hat. I'm just gonna make him a blue hat. And so I gave up on the idea of us all having the same color hats, which would probably look really silly anyway in pictures. I just thought it was cute. And there's like half a hat over there that I'm not gonna show because it's just, just how it is. I am not using a pattern. I just wanted to make a brioche hat that was very simple. I originally made them top down because I'm using yarn that's like scraps, but, and so I didn't know how much I had, but then I couldn't get the increases to look right. They looked fine. They looked sort of awkward. I don't know, they looked kind of awkward. And so I think I need to give it a lot more thought if I was gonna do it top down than if I was doing it bottom up because it feels a little easier to like do it as you go. Um, so I am working on mine right now because I can't get enough of it. And also I'm, it's gonna be like a yarn chicken thing. And so I'm like, is it gonna be enough? So I'll knit this probably for like three straight days and then I have to take it all out because it's not enough yarn. But this one is mine. And um, I'm just like, I love it so much. I'm glad I didn't do just like a brown hat. Okay, wow, that is so pretty, oh my goodness. I'm so happy with it, how it looks. Okay, I kind of knew how it was gonna look beforehand because these are both um, leftovers because I made my mom a pair of hibernation house socks. And I used this Surrey, which is October by Woolberry Fiber Co. And I used this um, Merino Cashmere blend also from Woolberry. I got this from a yarn swap and I purchased this. And so the, the beginning of the hibernation house socks, it has Surrey and this held together. And then after you do the cuff, you just use the sock yarn. So it looked incredible for my mom. And I knew, I was like, oh, I really, <laughs> I really, really like those. And so when I was down looking through my yarn that I had to make for like a fluffy hat, I saw this and I wanted it immediately. So what I'm thinking is I will wear this a lot in the fall and winter. My colors for the fall are like more um, black, denim and like maybe an olive green kind of color and so I think that will go nicely um with this those are just my like my everyday kind of wear for the winter wardrobe and so yeah I have like jean jacket or I would wear jeans and have a black like puffy coat um and so yeah I think this will get a lot of wear sorry if you can hear the um landscaping crew is here today and I hope you can't hear them I, don't, I think they're like trimming the bushes outside your house <laughs> My inspiration was definitely like um, September hat by Petite Knit. And there's also one, there's a hat by, oh goodness, I can't remember the designer or the name of the hat. It's like Ben's hat or David's hat or something like that, like a man's name and then hat. <laughs> and it's like a brioche hat. Um, and yeah, those were my inspirations for this. I hope that it turns out. We shall see, but one of my, oh, I'm not at acquisitions yet. I'll just go ahead and show you. Well, one of the acquisitions, I went to a yarn shop last night with my sister and my brother-in-law and my son and her son. And we, um, I was originally just going to look for yarn for Ollie for his hat. Cause he said he wanted a blue um, yarn for his hat and he didn't like the blue that I had, which is fine. I only had like one color and um, it was not, the best hat yarn so it's okay it's cool anyway um i got these needles because i have been knitting my hats on magic loop and that was just not enjoyable for me and i felt like i didn't have a cord short enough that was like doable so i got these new needles i had not tried them previously they are they are addy rockets um sorry about the glare i have not used this before i usually 
I just use the, the set that I have and then I have one or two red lace um, for Magic Loop. And so, yeah, I asked um, the owner, I was like, I don't know what to do. She had a few different ones. She didn't have the size I was looking for, like US 6, but she had US 7, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I'll try it. I'm really happy with them. I don't know that I've ever had an appropriate length for hats cable, but this is going to change my hat knitting. I already make a lot of hats, I think. This is like amazing. I cast this on last night and I haven't really had a ton of time to knit, but I feel like it's going really fast and part of it is due to the needles. Um, yes, okay. Anyway, the real acquisition is the yarn Ollie picked out for his hat. This is what he chose. Um, it's a BFL from Juniper Moon Farm and it is 202 yards. I don't know the color name. Oh, High Tide. Oh, I like that. Um, so Great Yarns is having a sale right now for their anniversary and also end of summer, I think. And so they have a lot of yarns on sale. That is one thing I talked about with my sister, maybe on Instagram, was how to find, someone asked how to find yarns on a budget. And one of the things we talked about was going to your local yarn shop and seeing their sale bin or waiting for most local yarn shops have like anniversary sales or end of season sales. And so a lot of them also have them online. So my local yarn shop, one of them, um, they have their yarns online. Freeman's also has their yarn online and their sales section online. So we buy a lot of yarn from the, <laughs> from the sale bins. So this was on sale, on sale. This was part of the um, big sale that they're having. And so I didn't ask Ollie to pick a sale yarn, but it was really nice that he did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm excited about this. Um, the owner told me that it will soften up. It's not super like harsh or anything, but since he is like a little little guy, I don't want it to be hard on his skin, but um, the owner was telling me that like it, it should be fine and it'll be nice and sturdy, which is also what we need. Okay, so I spoiled my acquisition, but that is what I got. Um, he was very excited about it. Unfortunately, the first yarn he picked, it was like a linen cotton blend. And so I had to tell him no, which was kind of sad. I was, I was hyping him up to pick out his yarn. Like you can pick whatever you want, anything you want, you can get it for the hat. And then he picked that and I was like, oh no, <laughs> what have I done? But he was very happy to then, then pick this one. Um, okay, my last work in progress that I have that's you know, made some progress. Oh no, no, I have two more. Okay, this is one of them. This is my Goen cardigan. I finished the back panel. This is the longest sweater I've made in my life. Um, I know you only see like my face here in my videos, but I am a small person in terms of height. Um, <laughs> and so I tend to crop most of my sweaters um, in general out of necessity because I don't have that standard, you know, length, but also because that's kind of the style I like, but this sweater is going to be so long or it's going to be full length, one or the other. But I think this panel is like 24 inches long. So it's like two feet long. I keep telling myself it's fine because it's the whole back panel. So if I wore it like a cape, you know, it, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be fine, but it is the going to be the biggest sweater I've, I've ever made. Um, but there's like lovely shaping up here that I, I finished and that adds a lot to the length, but I started the front panel, one of the front panels and it has the button band attached. Um, so you knit it at the same time, which is cool. I like that. Um, I don't mind going back and picking them up because they look great, but I like being able to knit it at the same time. So there's less finishing because this has seaming and so I do appreciate the less, <laughs> the less finishing. Um, but yeah, I feel like this one, the, the front panel is going a lot faster because it's, you know, obviously half as many stitches, but it's still slow, <laughs> slow goings. Um, but I have made some progress and um, yeah, every time I see this, I'm like, wow, it's so long. It goes on forever. Um, I also, yeah, this is the length that it's intended to be. And so it's one of the first times I've ever knit the sweater to be the correct length or the really length that's like recommended. I did modify it a little bit. Um, to I added some length to the 
underarm and I removed that length from the body because I'm planning to layer this a lot in the winter and so who knows like I might be wearing something a little bulkier underneath and so I want to have room for that and I also get like I don't like when things are super tight and so since I, si I size down for less ease I wanted to maintain the correct size of my underarm and so I did that I hope it turns out <laughs> if not it'll be it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be fine it's so beautiful I'm so very excited um, I've just like put some rows on it every every couple of days to just keep it going so that hopefully it will be done by mid-October is my goal. Okay, I do have a new cast on. This cast on, I wanted to make myself a new sweater. I really wanted to make myself a sweater like this to match Ollie, but I also wanted to make something that I wouldn't be concerned about messing up. And that is probably more important for um, like enjoyable time with my son than wearing a sweater that matches him because I want to not be worried about like all the chocolate or the, you know, whatever is coming onto my sweater. I don't want to be thinking about that. And so I went with this. <laughs> um, I'm using Peace Fleece uh, Worsted and this is the color Negotiation Gray. Um, I have had this in my stash for maybe like three years. I originally intended to use it for a snood. So I made my husband one. It's from um, Moon and Turtle. I made the snood for my husband and I got enough yarn to make myself one and Ollie one. But then he really likes his, but it's not really cold enough here to like get a lot of wear out of it. He wears it like disc golfing in the winter. But other than that, like there's just not a ton of use for it here because we're not like in the city where we're like walking to things or that kind of thing. Like we just get in the car and then get out where we're going. And so anyway, I said not to make one for Ollie and I. And so it's been in there for forever. It also has like a little bit of a weird smell. It could be just like, cause it, it just smells kind of like, mm, I don't know, musty. It's a little bit, it's, I, I don't know. It's a little weird to me. I haven't had a urine smell like this before. I don't know what, if it's just how it was made. Yeah, it's Remoulet and mohair. Anyway, I like Peace Fleece a lot and, and they're like what they are doing in their community. I think it's very cool. I'm here for it. So I wanted to use it. I didn't want to de-stash it. I wanted to have a sweater out of it. And so, but yeah, it just smelled a little weird. So I washed my swatch and soaked it for a very long time. It came out fine, it didn't smell at all. So I have this in the freezer right now because like I've heard that like if you don't wanna like wash your jeans a bunch of times, you can put them in the freezer and to get like a smell out of them. Like if you go to a restaurant or there's someone smoking, you can like get the, the smell out by putting them in the freezer. <laughs> so I was like, I'll try that first with my yarn. And then if that doesn't work, I'm probably gonna wash it before I use it because like, afterwards like my hands or my shirt kind of smell like it I don't like love it just been sitting in a zipped um ziploc bag for like two or three years so maybe that is part of it it's just been sitting there I don't know anyway I needed to get out get aired out maybe I'll dry it outside oh that's a good idea okay anyway now I'll tell you what I'm making I am making the Sila I don't know if it's sweater or pullover by line and magazine um and I didn't realize there's actually a knit along going on right now for this sweater. So that's kind of cool. Um, when I post a picture of this on my Instagram, I will be sure to, to tag that. Um, here it is. It's a pretty straightforward sweater. It's very similar to the Lento sweater, also by Lino Magazine, but it has a heavier gauge um, intended. And so this, like, this is listed as worsted, I think, but I would say it is heavier than that. I have not met Gage. I swatched for a lot of sweaters for this. One was the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta. I wanted to make that, but my gauge was so big. <laughs> it was like off by like a whole inch. Um, so I did not make that. I couldn't, there wasn't enough sizes to like modify it um, for me. So I'm making this instead and I'm very happy with it. I love the straightforward nature of the pattern. I think this will be nice to just have as like more of a sweatshirt sweater. I did add 
in the raglans I added like a little bit of a it's a dip stitch um, just for a little bit more interest um, versus having it totally plain I just wanted to see what that would look like I've never done that stitch before and so I probably could have made it a little bit different I was kind of wanting it to cover up the raglan seam um, instead it does not <laughs> But I think when you look at it, like it still, it still looks cute. Like there's a little bit of interest. And then I was thinking I would continue it down the side, um, on the side seams, just because I have a lot of plain, like I do have a gray, my gray lento is almost exactly the same color. And so adding a little bit of interest to differentiate from that, we will see. But I do like the fabric of the yarn. Anyway, it's gone super fast. I am like putting it away for now. I'm putting it in the freezer so that I don't just like knit on this all the time because I have a lot of other projects to complete too. Um, but yeah, I hadn't heard of this pattern and so I was just searching on Ravelry by weight and I found the sweater. I also could be pronouncing it wrong, um, but if you're doing the knit along, let me know. I hadn't seen anything about it um, until I like Googled the pattern and I was um, looking on Instagram and saw there's a knit along. So I love that. I will be participating in that. Um, and I cannot wait to, to finish this. I think I should do the neck next when I run out. I'm almost done with this first ball. Um, yeah, it's very little left. So I think I'll do the neck band next. Um, yeah. And then I'll get to be able to try it on. Yeah. So I was going to make a bunch more summer sweaters and then I skipped straight to winter and air and weight and hats and all of that. I still have like in my heart I want to make another summer sweater I was thinking like a moonset tee maybe but I just don't know or like a striped tank we have a lot of hot days left here probably two and a half months of heat left where I live but also when it gets cold I want to have my sweaters ready to wear so I feel like I need to start knitting cold weather stuff like now in August and then in January start my summer stuff so that I can wear it <laughs> in the summer because when I by the time I finish a fingering weight garment it'll probably be September so I could get some wear out of it um but not as much I I don't know I don't know so anyway I'm just going with what I'm feeling like what I see in my yarn pantry that is kind of calling to me and this I was like I finally I want to use it I won't be super worried about it because it is like very sturdy yarn and also more of like a utilitarian pattern, like uh, everyday wear kind of thing. So I think that will be nice um, for my my wardrobe. Um, I have a lot of everyday wear kind of kind of activities. Um, so yeah, wow, that was a lot for me. This one is going to be long. Um, I haven't shared my, my works in progress in a long time. I'm still working on my um, Lucian Friends, but I haven't finished the third animal yet, so I didn't bring him on today. Um, he doesn't have any <laughs> legs. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, I was thinking about doing a video where I go back through and I talk about my spring and like 2023 plans that I posted on YouTube and then talking about if I finished them or not. Are you guys interested in seeing like a recap of what I made per season and putting that, you know, kind of reflection, that kind of thing with what I plan to make? Spoiler, it's going to be like half of what I plan to make, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to see if that was interesting to you. Um, if not, that's fine. Um, okay. Well, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. If you're at Flock, enjoy Flock. Um, it looks amazing. Maybe one day, um, we'll all make it out there. I'm sure Ollie would love to go, um, meet all of you friends. But anyway, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Happy knitting.